There's a place, a school, an institution where a professor resides. One that for the past 30 years has traveled the world teaching others. A pioneer in America of the fighting science of Savat. One who codified the sports of this fighting style. One who has produced clubs, champions, and continues to develop. Listen to words of Professor Buitron. Hello guys. Professor Buitron here once again, and now we're doing things a little bit different. You know, we had the questions and answers and the viewpoints and opinions. We did that for 100, 100 uh, Mondays straight, and um, we had a lot of great, great questions, a lot of great history that we talked about. It was, it was a, but things had to stop, and the reason I say things have to stop is we have to move on to other things that are going on. And right now, in the past couple of months, I've been seeing a lot more violence, a lot more street fights, a lot more issues going on, and people are capturing them on, on video, on their cell phones. And let me tell you this, it's a dangerous world out there, okay? I don't want anybody to get into a fight. I don't want anybody to be involved in, in an assault. We're not here for that purpose. We're here, and I'm going to show two videos today of two different fights. And it's not here to make fun of anybody. It's here to show you all the dangers that could occur. And that occurred there, what happens. You have to understand two things, and I'm going to say that right now. One is self-defense. We all have the right to defend ourselves. We do not have the right to go pick on another, bully somebody else, be violent towards anybody else, period. But when the need comes for us to defend ourselves, we have the right to do so. It's a difference. Um, the first fight uh, altercation, I really I'm going to put out there, is a couple of kids dealing with a security guard. Whatever happened, some people say this was in Australia, some people say it was in England, some people say it was in New Zealand, wherever the case may be. What happens is you have a couple of kids that were, I believe, were thrown out of a mall or a shopping center type environment. You have, they're struggling, they're getting out, they're being, you know, they're being kids, they're being, they're telling the security officers off. Uh, it escalates, and I'm gonna, here's where it escalated to. They grab one of the kids, they start fighting with the other kid, they punch back and forth, and they grab one of them, and they slam them to the ground, they pull, put them to the ground. When the two security guards come in, one of the security guards makes a mistake and that knees a kid on the ground. Well, his friend comes up and hits him, knocks him, senses. I'll show you right now. And, um, what that shows you right there is right now we have a fad going on. Every martial art wants to take somebody to the ground. Okay, there's grappling elements in all martial arts. Remember, there were fighting styles from all over the world. Every different nation had one. Every different culture had one. Every different town had one. Every ethnic group had one. That's just the way it is. It occurred. You had to learn how to defend yourself. Remember, defending yourself is so your, your, your God-given right. Now, with the, within the last 20 years, 25 years this way, and so I would say 95 to the present, everybody has been Brazilian jiu-jitsu craze. We have to take somebody to the ground. And a, and a lot of people don't realize that those sport, their sports are combative sports. Okay, a combative sport is good for a com for that combative sports arena. The street is very difficult, very violent, very aggressive. You can get killed. You can make mistakes. You know, the f at a drop of a dime, things change, and a fight starts that quick as well. So when you start showing martial arts, you start showing techniques within martial arts when you get somebody and compromise them to go on the ground, what happens with the friends that are around you? What you saw in this video 
as soon as that guy went need him on the ground and both of them had one in there the friends were still around to hit him he is God was with that officer that he just got punched in the face imagine if that kid would have taken that skateboard would have cracked him over the head listen I'm going to tell you a story I had a, a dear friend of mine that was very well in karate he was a second degree black belt in Shorokan karate went to a local bar started fighting he would go around picking fights actually guess what happened he slipped fell to the ground the whole bar went into a frenzy he was six weeks in the hospital broken nose broken jaw cracked spine vertebrae in the spine his neck he was in pretty bad shape listen when reality strikes it strikes fast and it strikes hard and it is mean and it is cruel there's no forgiveness there okay so when you make mistakes people that are not around or that are not physically there are going to take advantage of that situation and things are going to occur and things have things occurred actually so with that said pay no on how you train where you train and what you're training for okay tell your martial art instructor if you're taking karate judo brazilian jiu jitsu is this going to save me in the street i'm here to learn to protect myself in the street okay be up front i'm not here to learn to go in the ring i'm not here to learn to go fight somebody in the mat I don't want to compete. I want you to teach me to defend myself. Now, if competition is your way, please do so. There's some great athletes out there. God, they're phenomenal. They're very inspirational. Okay, um, it's good to see men and women competing. That the magnitude of competition, the training that's going on, the new levels that are being developed. It is actually amazing to see. You know. It's gotten to the point now that we're actually doing a debate for the podcast gloves off. And I told myself whatever money we do for that debate, we're going to give it to USA Savat to start buying a uh, of official ring. I donated two of my rings back then to the Webb County Sheriff uh Rick Flores and he recharged up the boxing program for Webb County Pal. and this share of Martin Quayet has taken over over that's years ago and they're doing an excellent job so my passion had the two rings i could not fit them where i was at they were being they were deteriorating because we had them under uh under just a a roof and you know the weather was getting at them at least now they're using them they're putting them for good use so right now we're having an event that we're doing that and whatever we get from there I'm going to donate to USA Savat to start towards the purchase of a boxing ring. Okay? Now, the second one. The second fight that was sent to me. And this is not to tell you folks this is what I will do or this is what we do here in Savat or this is what we no. This is just I'm just answering the question and what happened of what I saw. the pros and the cons of everything that goes on there and I want more people this is just for educational purposes this is not for anything else it's not for you all to go pick a fight god forbid um but uh you know this is for you all to understand what actually happens and what's actually going on the re- the purpose for this video is f- to educate the people of the dangers that are out there and martial arts is a form of how to express yourself and it's also a form of defending oneself so understand that this this next video is uh a guy pushing another one they look at if they're inside a mall the guy's back backtracking or backpedaling just moving back telling him you know stay away pushing his hands back um gets to the point that the guy throws a couple of fu- punches at him he step he kind of steps back and unleashes what there's two kicks in Savat that it's similar to 
But if he did survive, great. But it looks more like a spinning hook kick from from karate or taekwondo, be just the way he did it. And uh, but in Sabat we have uh, two kicks that are similar, and they're called uh, lateral reverse or tandu. They're similar in nature, but he did it spinning. So, and I'll show you guys that right now in a bit. I'll I'll do it with my son for you guys to correlate what what happened. But you have to realize that a spinning tandu, not a spinning lateral reverse. The spinning tandu is the fastest and the most powerful of the kicks of Sabat. I had a student of mine that he's no longer with us. You know, life takes people in different formats. He was, um, he got a little bit too much swelling on the head inside a boxing match. He was doing great. And then he starts playing around with a Belgium champion. He was winning by points. He had to fight one. 15 seconds into the third round, the Belgium champion, I wish I had that in film because he just came out, out of nowhere with a spinning tandu, hit him across the jaw, and went down on the ground. You can use this kick, this technique, both in the ring and in the street. And uh, I understand people out there, you know, the, the basement dwellers and folks that, that sit back and just kind of make fun of everything that's going on and say, we can't do this, listen. You can't kick in a martial arts because we'll take you to the ground. The guy was the aggressor. The guy was throwing punches and kicks. The other guy came out of nowhere and guess what? Planted him with a spinning hook of karate or taekwondo or a lateral reverse of sabat or a tandu of sabat. But uh, that's what happened. You can watch the video. Now, as watching the video, you see how he eschews the the punch and he uses that momentum to turn around and spin perfectly executed you can tell he had some training behind him so right now we're going to do uh, that spinning tandu and lateral reverse for you guys to see how it's done both lead leg rear leg and spinning be right back as we were talking earlier about the kicks that are similar to what that gentleman did as he defended himself in Savat and Bukna says in the 80s, before 70s, 80s, and pre that, you know, up to about 95, you had two distinct kicks. We had uh, the Tandu, you had the lateral revert. Some people call it the group in, the Tandu, but it was, it was still sim similar. Nowadays, they just call it uh, uh, revert or group in. Um, Spinning before, they used to call it tornado. Now, any kick that turns, they call it a tornado. Well, so things have changed in, in Sabat as we've gone through. So, uh, here with my son, he puts up his hands and he's going to do a lateral revert front leg. Okay? You see how the lateral revert hooks back or comes back. In Sabat, you're not hitting with a heel because if you hit with a heel, it's going to stop where it's at. So it goes again, lateral revert. Okay, that's from the front leg, from the rear leg. Okay, now we're gonna do tandu. You're gonna see the difference, it's gonna be extended. No, uh, front leg, tandu. And rear leg. Okay, understand? Now we're gonna do a spinning lateral revert. Lateral revert, go. Okay, and now we're gonna do a spinning tandu. Okay, see the difference? One is done with a heel and the foot goes through. So in other words, I'm gonna pick up my son's uh, foot and put it sideways. A tandu's gonna hit you with this por portion and drag the, the foot across, okay? You can also extend it this way and do the same thing. It's gonna glide, but in a, in a, go, go up, knee up. But in a lateral reverse, it's gonna bend. Okay, that's the only that's the only difference. So the knee bends. We'll continue doing that, folks. We now have uh, membership for those that have been asking for online classes. Go on in there. It's there in, in Facebook. We it's from blue. You're going to get all the way up to yellow. There's different perks. There's different things that are going on there. there Our merchandise is up there, just like this shirt. If you like it, uh, you guys can order it. 
So keep the questions coming in. The next time, much peace. Come train at the best kept secret of Laredo, Bowie Tron Academy, 956 401 4868, Savat.biz.